I am here. Jesus, I must tell you of an important truth that is necessary for men to know in order to reach the celestial kingdom, and a knowledge of the plan of salvation. I know that the Bible contains many sayings attributed to me in reference to this plan, and many of my alleged sayings are believed in by those who claim to be Christians, which are not true, for I never said them and they are contrary to what I received from the Father as to the true plan of men's redemption from sin, and as to the only way, by which, they can obtain the true atonement with the Father and a knowledge of their own immortality. Many of these sayings were written by men who knew not the only way to a oneness with the Father and were the results of the teachings of the manuscripts that then existed and were received by the Jews as the revelations of Moses, and of many of the prophets who had no knowledge of the divine love or of its rebest all upon humanity. These men made me say those things that accorded with their ideas of what was necessary to a salvation or a possibility of their becoming at one with me and with the Father, and in writing their ideas confused the truth with what they supposed was the truth as contained in the Old Testament and much harm has been done by attributing many of these sayings to me, because of the supposed authority that thereby attached to them. My disciples never taught, and never understood that their salvation, or that of any man, depended upon faith in me as the Son of God, or that I, the mere Jesus, had in me any virtue to forgive sin or to ensure an entrance into the true kingdom of God, or that, I, as the man Jesus was a Son of God in the sense that the Bible teaches. They knew that the Father had revealed to me the truth, and that I had in me that love, which to a large extent, made me like unto and at one with the Father. That my teachings of the rebest all of the divine love was true, and that when they are any man should possess this love, to the extent of that possession, they would become at one with the Father, and also with me, who possessed it to a greater degree than any man. I say, they knew this and taught it to the people as I had taught it to them, but when the compilers of the present New Testament came to declare my sayings and teachings, they knew not of this love, and hence, could not understand what many of my true expressions meant, and gave them an interpretation so far as my real sayings were concerned, that would comply with their knowledge. No, I am not correctly quoted in many of these sayings, and I may say in the large majority of them, for when they were written, as now contained in the New Testament, men had lost the knowledge of their true meaning and out of their own minds recorded that which they thought was what I had really said. I do not see how these false sayings can be corrected, except to take each saying and show, by its incompatibility with what I now say, its falsity. This would take too much time and expend much energy that could the better be employed in declaring what the truth actually is. But this I will say, that whenever these sayings impart that I claim to be God, or that I could or did forgive man of their sins, or that whatsoever should be asked of the Father in my name would be received, are all untrue and has greatly misled the true seeker of knowledge of immortality. My disciples were close to me and understood better my sayings than all others, and yet they did not understand all the truth, and left the mortal life with many expectations that were not fulfilled and in the very nature of the same could not be fulfilled. They were in certain non-essentials influenced in their beliefs and expectations by their training in the teachings of these Old Testament manuscripts, and were very largely Jews in belief when they died. They understood the vital things that determined their relationship to God and to their existence in the future world, but as to many of the non-essentials they retained the faith of their fathers, and were not able to receive all the truth which I could have taught them. I must not linger to correct these alleged sayings of mine, but must occupy my time and yours in declaring and revealing the truth as it exists now and existed then, and you and the world may know, that wherever and whenever these Bible sayings of mine conflict with what I have written and shall write you, they are untrue and were never said by me. Thus, in this general way, I will make plain to men that the Bible must not in all particulars be relied on or believed in as containing the truth or my declarations of the truth. I was saying that the Jews and the teachers of the church that became established or rather controlled after the death of my followers, and those who understood the true teachings of my disciples, taught the conduct of men towards their fellow men, and the observance of certain ceremonies and feasts were the important things for men to learn and practice in order to gain salvation, rather than the truths which made man a child of the Father and atone with him through the operations of the new birth. Of course, before my coming, the Jews could not have taught the truth of the new birth, 
because the great gift of the rebissed all of the divine love had not been made, and it was not possible for that great truth, which was necessary for immortality and the possibility of man's partaking of God's divine love, to be known to the Jews, and hence, they could not teach it. And their teachings were limited and confined to the things which would make them purer in their natural love and in the relation of that love to the Father, God, at that time, while he never gave them the privilege of becoming at one with him in the divine love or even of becoming such beings in their character and spiritual qualities as were Adam and Eve, commonly supposed to be our first parents, yet did require of the obedience to his laws which would develop in them their natural love to such a degree, as would cause it to become in harmony with his laws that controlled and governed their natural love. If you will study the Ten Commandments you will see that these commandments deal only with the natural love and by their observance would tend to make men better in that natural love, and in their conduct with one another and in their relationship to God, so far as that love brought them in communion with him. This natural love, as I have said, was possessed by men, just as the first parents possessed it, and was never taken from them, and in its purity was in perfect harmony with God's creation and the workings of his universe. But notwithstanding these great qualities men were mere men and had in them no part of the divinity of the Father, and this being so, the Jews, while they were supposed to be more in contact with God through the prophets and seers, than were any of the other races or sects of God's children, yet, never looked for a Messiah that would come with any other or greater power than that, which would enable them to become the great ruling nation of the earth, to whom all other peoples would be subordinated and subjected and powerless to ever again conquer or subject their nation to bondage, in a way this Messiah was to be a kind of supernatural being, having power which no other man ever had, and a kind of God to be worshipped and served in their earthly lives. Many of the Jews, notwithstanding what may be said to the contrary and the teachings of the prophets, believed in other gods than the one which Moses declared, as is evidenced in their histories, both sacred and secular, for whenever their God, that is, the God of Moses, did not treat them just as they thought he should, they would create and worship other gods even the golden calf. So I say, they never expected a Messiah who would be other than the most powerful ruler on earth, their ideas and beliefs of the life after death were very hazy, and even the part of them known as the Pharisees, who believed in a kind of resurrection, never conceived that when they should drop the mortal life, they would be anything different in their qualities and characters from what they were as mortals minus the physical bodies, and the great increased happiness which would come to them as such mortals, changed in their appearances. This was the idea of the common people and also of the priests and scribes. And notwithstanding the many beautiful and spiritual psalms ascribed to David, the happiness or glory that they might expect, was only that which would come to them as spiritualized mortals having only the natural love, so you see, the great gift of the Father that is the rebissed all of the divine love was not known or even dreamed of by the Jews, nor conceived of nor taught by their scribes, nor even by their great prophets, or lawgivers such as Moses and Elias and others. Their conception of God was that of an exalted personal being, all-powerful and all-knowing, and one whom they would be able to see face to face, as they might any king or ruler when they should come into the heavens which he had prepared for them, and where he had his habitation.